as important as more resources, says Tony Alexandra. Here we have Dr. S. Maha, Assistant Professor of English, National College Autonomous Trichy, with us. She is a real resourceful person. She is an illustrious alumni of the department, an avid researcher and an adept scholar. She makes a mark wherever she goes. We welcome you, Dr. Maha, for sparing your valuable time and being here to share your expert ideas on the topic poetic license. Welcome, Thank you, Dr. Maha. Thank you. Alone, we can do little. Together, we can do so much, says Helen Killer. The Bards Club has successfully conducted four meetings and now is progressing with the fifth meeting. This is because of the able guidance from Dr. Beverly Maria Francis, the Vice President of the Bards Club. Welcome, Anam. I also welcome Mr. Chris Alvin and the dedicated organizing team. Welcome, dear students. And a program of this sort will not be successful without uh, the student participant and enthusiasts from other colleges. I welcome you all, dear participants. And now, once again, I welcome you all to participate in this particular meeting. Welcome and over to the MCs. Thank you, sir, for welcoming the participants. Felicitation is inspiring to others and motivating to whom you felicitate. Now, I would like to welcome our head of the department, Dr. V. L. Jaipal, to felicitate the gathering. It's over to you, sir. Good afternoon to you all. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate Dr. Uh, Jaral Sahai Nagan and uh, Dr. Beverly uh, for uh, coordinating this uh, uh, club right from the academic year beginning. I really appreciate you both, uh, dear doctors, uh, for arranging uh, uh, many meetings. This is the, I think, fifth meeting. Yeah, and uh, another appreciation in a special way for arranging uh, very good speakers for our students okay and uh, i'm really happy uh, today our uh, own student okay our own old student yes, uh, dr maga is there uh, we are really happy, happy and sir. proud about uh, dr maga yes and, uh, thank you so much sir. yeah welcome and i think uh, our students will definitely have a very fruitful time here in this meet uh, with your rich experience in uh, uh, teaching career and also as a poet. So, I wish all the participants, especially the uh, coordinators, uh, Dr. Gerald and Dr. Bavali, and in a special way, Dr. Maha, who is going to uh, deliver her lecture in this meeting. I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now it's time to listen to our resource person. Now I would like to welcome our resource person, Dr. Maha, Assistant Professor, National College, Trichy. It's over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Rahul. Very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. I'm doubly blessed to be a part of uh, uh, the, my alma mater yet again. And uh, I'm very happy to present my topic, the topic which I am going to present today is Poetic License in front of my own teacher, Dr. V. L. Jayapal. He is my professor too, guys, just like you. He is my professor too. So in that way, I am your senior, yeah, again your senior. And uh, I am also happy that uh, Dr. S. Gerard Sakaya Nathan, my own uh, batchmate, my, a very good friend of mine is also with me here and I thank uh, Dr. S. Gerald personally for having invited me here. Am I audible? Yes. 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 yes, yes sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sirs. And I also thank uh, Dr. Beverly uh, for having me over here. Oh, thank and you, ma'am. Thank you. So is my presentation visible? 
shall we get into the presentation sir yes shall we, sir? yes is my presentation visible it's visible it's visible now okay and uh, uh, dear students and my dear young poets of bath club what do you understand from the word poetic license please feel free let's have a let make it as an interactive session i hope po young poets are over here Are you familiar with the term poetic license? It it may be like a copyright, ma'am. Very good. Maybe like a kind of copyright. Okay. What do you mean by copyright? First of all, just tell me your understanding. That there's nothing wrong or nothing like nothing correct or nothing wrong. You just tell me your understanding. Pattern. A pattern. So what is the pattern actually? What do you mean by pattern? Sorry for posting for lots of questions. I just wanted to check your understanding. That's why I'm uh, trying to. Um, uh, if a person inverts uh, something newly, he have to uh, he have to have the proofs that uh, he have invented it. Uh, that is called the copyright or patent, ma'am. General license is something. Uh, just the copyright or the authorized uh, the authorization mm -hmm. that we want. for our own product or for our own creations that is the license okay how can a poet claim this license it's all about creativity right yes ma'am yes so how can uh, if i am a if, uh, just imagine if i am a poet how can i claim claim uh, license for for my pieces for my work of art definitely we can having write, right? having our own yes. or way yes. of writing ma'am yes in your through your own of writing your through your own way of writing yes fine but this word poetic license is always must misunderstood it is not that actually yes so poetic license it is the freedom given to poets to ignore somebody told me about pattern right so it is to ignore the regular pattern the license to ignore the regular pattern the freedom given to poets to ignore standard rules of grammar or proper diction in order to create a desired artistic effect okay is it clear yes ma'am yes so the freedom taken by a poet in breaking proper spelling editing and grammar rules to achieve a desired effect poets may even make up words they can even create words they can build on the say the build if they can build on the existing word yes so we can see how they are building on yes i think for, i hope are you all ready to listen to a, a, a small piece of song you are all familiar with this song please listen guys yes ma'am yes, did ma you listen to the song yes ma'am yes now what did you understand from this this song is familiar to you right did you all like the song or did, do you love the song yes ma'am so what impressed you why do you love this song let's interact please interact with me it's very catchy and also the rhythm is also quite pleasing fantastic pleasant. fantastic i just love the word uh, use you you actually used catchy okay 
So what do you mean by catchy here? I, what do you actually mean? It's quite Something easy to remember and also uh, quite pleasing to us. Very good. It's very pleasing. So what pleased you in this piece? Especially in the part which I played. Which one pleased you very much? The South African uh, terms that were used. Yeah, exactly. Pigeon. Okay. So that's a pigeon. Okay. That, you love that, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, fine. And others? Others can also answer. The line Samina Mina that, uh, uh, that uh, yes that's like. a pigeon that's a pigeon that that's used very good anybody else please come on interact with me I love to listen to you this is your forum of course any other any anybody else Okay, fine. Lyrics Please. that uh, boost uh, boost the uh, listeners, ma'am. That boost the listeners. Okay, that boost uh, that boost the culture of Africa. Very good. So, why does it talk about the culture of Africa? What is the purpose of what is the purpose of this song actually? The then FIFA World Cup that was uh, held in South Africa. Very good, very good, very good, very excellent. So it boasts the culture of Africa, the, the nation in which the World Cup took place, right? So if you watch it closely, I'll play it again and I'll 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 give I'll pause it then and there. Hearing it so sad, choosing your path. Yes. So just uh, just go to the first slide. You're on the front line. Everyone's watching, right? Everyone's watching. So, what is the actual uh, actual uh, what are the actual words? Everyone is watching. Those those are the actual words. But for the convenience of the rhythm, just for the convenience of the music, what the poet has done, the poet has, the writer, okay, the writer of this poem has combined those two words, everyone is, into one. Is it clear? And when it saw, when the singer uh, sang the poem, the, this particular song, it sounds like, a single word. Yes, please, uh, please listen again. You're on the front line. Everyone's watching. Fire. Everyone's watching. You know. So, how did it sound? How did it sound? Those two words. Yes, please, guys. Everyone's watching. Yeah. So when you when you sing. It becomes one word. Okay, so the poet, for his convenience, he has combined those two words just for the sound effect. Okay, so this is a, uh, this is the freedom of the poet. So this is called as poetic license. This is also called as poetic license. Am I clear to you all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Please listen to uh, listen to the next part of the uh, song. Now it's serious. We're getting closer. This isn't over. The pressure's off. Yes. So in the next part, we had few words like o o a a towards the end of uh, the part which i played right so those ho ho and a a what does it mean does it give any meaning this o and a see does it give any meaning actually
So this O O and A A does it give any meaning to you? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. But when you sing it, could you feel anything? Yes, ma'am. What do you feel when you sing it? Some happiness, the enjoyment. Could you? Yes, you could feel a uh, sort of happiness, a sort of enjoyment. Could you understand anything? Do you get emotional when you sing the song? Does this O O and A A touch your senses? Does it reach your sense? Yes, ma'am. Yes. What? How does it? How does it reach? These words, these particular words, O O and A A. These are the, these uh, words do not have any meaning at all. Those are. This is. Uh, it's not at all sensible, right? But it appeals to your senses. the time of the second time of listening it asked us to repeat yes when you repeat it gives a sort of you become enthusiastic when you listen to the song right so that is the motto of the writer he achieves that motto he when you listen to the song you get into that rhythm you get into that rhythmic pattern and also that rhythmic pattern the purpose of the rhythmic pattern is to yes make Give you all make yes make yes make the listeners enthusiastic right and it has achieved the song has achieved so the poet has achieved those uh, kind of those sorts of emotions okay through some few words which doesn't even exist it it may exist colloquially but it doesn't exist in traditional english the so o r a a if you just type it o o a a in google it will give, definitely the google will give you an answer but every tradition in our tradition o o uh, gives another a, a sort of meaning and other in another another tradition in african tradition it gives a sort of another meaning but this is an international song but the appeal the song that gives is universal yes next and again this song is so familiar to you all right this is a recent hit Yes. So, just listen to it. Madi enja enja mi wango wango onari amma ye ambari inda inda umari. Okay. So, how does she pronounce the word enjoy? How does the how does the singer pronounce the word enjoy? Enjoy. Enjoy. Yes, that's how she pronounces. Does she pronounce it on her own, out of her own intention? No. That is how the writer has wrote. The uh, the one who's uh, the or uh, the one who's singing is all is a very writer. The Arivu, I think, is a very writer. That is how he has written it. So, so this this particular word, enjoy, enjoy is this is the English word, right? the song is a tamil song it is a typical tamil song it is written in tamil and the target audience who are the target target audience tamils are the tar target mm. audience so but still he has made use of the word enjoy and just to relate that particular word to us he wanted us to relate to the word enjoy so he made it enjoy right 
so that is the that is globalization that is where a global word becomes a local word so the in, in, writer's intention is to make it a localized one he wanted to make it, he wanted the to make it a colloquial word okay that is no word enjoy in english okay the the writer has built what he did he has added few extra words okay the syntax itself the very syntax syntax itself is reconstructed by the writer because he has that rights he because he has the freedom to reconstruct to build on any word yes so the literary term poetic license is also known as artistic license okay it's a license of any artist the license that we have any the, that any artist has right and it is also known as literary license dramatic license actually it is derived from this dramatic the very word dramatic license dramatic license and licentia poetica or just simply license so i have the rights Li license should be treated as the rights okay the creator's rights he can create anything as he wish he can he, he can even create a new word that is how that is how jk rowling did right she has coined many words lots and lots of words and now we have all those words in our english dictionary just because of poetic license she was able to coin all the words she was able to coin the words and she was able to fit in all those words into english dictionary how does it sound as a poet when you listen to these things how does it sound what do you feel now yes guys like given a new freedom to explore more yes we have freedom we were not aware actually it's not a new freedom we have that freedom we are not aware of the freedom yes so poetic license is a conversational or a colloquial term actually and this particular word we take the very word poetic license it is actually it comes from latin yes the very word licentia it comes from latin licentia means permitted so you are permitted to write as you wish imagine as you wish and be sensible or you can even be nonsense as you wish that is even if if it's a, it may sound nonsense to others whereas if a poet has authoritatively brought out that nonsense in his text it become it gives sense it becomes sensible yes i'll go to the next slide so some words used by poets in certain poems do not exist in english language at all just like you have made, like many you can find you can even you can coin the poet has the license to create a word to describe or explain a mood or a particular feeling he can impose a feeling into a word just like enjoy okay for an for an uh, like a, for a person who Uh, is a non-native. Okay, we are not natives of English, right? Enjoy. When I say enjoy, as students of English, as learn, as we all know English, we are very much uh, familiar with the proper pronunciation, the exact pronunciation. We may say it's enjoy. It's not enjoy. Okay. Let us go to a village. Anywhere down south or down, like up north, in, around across Tamil Nadu, you go to a village. Village, okay, and you find uh, you go. Uh, you just go say this word, utter this word, the same way the poet utters to a eighty-year-old granny. 
she'll be even if she doesn't understand the word exactly she, even if she doesn't know the meaning of exact meaning of the word she'll be able to relate to the word because it is not enjoy it is enjoy so she may think that it is something that is uh, that is existing in our tamil language in that way she will be able to relate to it that is how it as normal word a poet who uh, the a poet can come make uh, uh, any word a colloquial word he can make an, any he can make any word as a colloquial word yes just take see here for example red is the jain test that there is no word there is no such word jain test red is the jain test the word jain is a noun there is no such word the actual word is largest just for the sound effect okay red is and for the just to give to make it uh, all the more figurative the poet is using red is the jain test okay so what could be the reason the reasons are just for creativity sake and for artistic effect could you tell me yes now uh, the platform is to you why don't you share few words the few words that you have coined when you wrote poems some few words tell me few words have you ever coined a word purposefully i'm saying purposefully have you ever coined the word purposefully when you wrote poems yes have you ever if not no problem leave it don't think not that really. we are one not really okay fine don't think that we are only coining or the writers or the song writers are only coining or these people are deviating from the regular nouns even starting from shakespeare he used double past he is known for that actually starting from him till now till the recent writer everyone are trying to explore english language explore uh poems they are trying to explore their creativity actually speaking they are trying to explore their creativity so they are trying to coin new words or they can they are altering the existing words or they are leaving off few things purposefully they are leaving off few things they are not sticking on to we are not only no, no, not only like leaving and uh, forgetting things they are not sticking sticking on to the traditional norms okay because we have traveled from writing right to writing rights so no more writing right when it comes to poetic license there is nothing called right or wrong the very word right is deconstructed there it is shattered so what exists there writing rights only that is existing there yes so from convention to unconvention so we had a uh, conventional sonnets okay so uh, conventionally a sonnet must have 14 lines with a fixed rhyme scheme that is how a conventional sonnet is general mad general general madly hopkins he himself he bro he broke that norm he brought in curtal sonnet that was a form which he hopkins himself invented he used that in three of his poems from 14 lines from regular pattern 14 lines to 11 lines so he deviated from 14 lines to 11 lines then we have spencer edmund spencer spencer in sonnet is very popular again he he also broke that norms 
he came from 14 to 9. He was convenient with the nine lines. So why did these people conveniently broke those lines? Sorry, broke those rules. Please tell me. Do you have any idea? And even Chaucer. You must be familiar with Rhyme Royal. The Chaucerian stanza. Even he broke the law with the regular uh, tradition. He came out of it. Why did these poets, why did these poets purposefully do so? Or why did they do? Because uh, they maybe uh, find it difficult to write as per the norms. Very good, excellent. They found it difficult. One thing, another thing. Maybe the readers may be find difficult. Maybe to impress the readers, good. Any other any other answer? Maybe they found it uh, difficult to uh, express themselves uh, with the conventional norms. Excellent, Jadal. I how can I say wrong to you? <laughs> Such a legend you are. Good, correct, perfect, perfect answer. The poets, see, it's after all creation. If I want to write, I will just be writing on my own. Spontaneous overflow of, it's just a spontaneous overflow. When the poem comes automatically, spontaneously, when it falls spontaneously, how will I stick on to a tradition? It's not tables, right? It's not a set of rules, right? The, the creator himself, he, the creator is always a liberator. He so is he such a liberal soul? He cannot stick on to any traditional or normal a normal pattern. As a creator, have you ever felt so, guys? When you write, so for example, if you want to write a couplet, you you have a plan to write a couplet. Will you go refer uh, refer to uh, famous couplets and you will start writing? Obviously, we don't. We will not. The moment you feel like writing, uh, spontaneously you will write. And moreover, we have not memorized any couplet. Only when we are fully packed with the uh, traditional set of uh, rules and forms, we will be able to draft something in that particular form itself. If that is the case, that will not become a creation again. So as a creator, we must be liberal, all of us. So, it is not, you see, uh, Ezra Pound justifies things like this. The three things that writing must adhere to are melopia, logophia, and fanophia. So at the moment I write, what I naturally do is, obviously, you go with sounds, right? That is, we all go with sounds. That is rhythm or meter, tone, anything. We can incorporate those things into melopia. And logophia, we go with the words, okay, and logic. Then fanophia, the imagination, automatically the imagination. The moment I say doubt, what comes to your mind? I'm asked if I ask you to write a poem on doubt, what comes to your mind? What will come to your mind immediately? What will come to your mind? The image of the doubt comes to your mind, right? Yes, ma'am. Which which dow? Is it a dow soap or the dow bird? Which one came to your mind? The bird. The bird. Mike. The bird. Of course, the bird. And that, see, somebody laughed because he was thinking of he or she must have thought of that particular dow. That nothing wrong in it, right? Nothing wrong in that his imagination or her imagination also, because we are after all we are all creators. Okay. So every so when it when it is fan of fear. When it is imagination oriented, when, it's, when it is image oriented, it will all become figurative. 
this. 10,000 saw I at a glance. The moment I hear, when you listen to the, these lines, no, Im immediately that picture comes to your mind. The picture of that 10,000, that the, Im immediately that comes to your mind, it strikes your mind. When I say, oh, wild west wind, it gives you a rhetorical quest. Doesn't? Doesn't it? Yes. Yes. So that so that's it. So after listening uh, after listening to poetic license, how many of you are going to create new words? How many of you are going to create new work of arts? Your own work of arts. How many of you want, uh, how many of you are now confident to write? How, how, how many of you have gained that confidence? Yes. Dr. Chakra is confident now. Yes, please. Actually, Colleague. when I write this, grammatical mistakes would come up. What so what? That will, again, you can, you can claim poetic license. You say I did it purposefully. See, I'm kidding. But you, my, your, your, your poems must be uh, your poems must be grammar free. No, nope. but again, English is our second language. Why do you bother much? Don't worry about grammar. When something strikes you, when you feel like writing, take a pen. Make it black and white, like pin it down, make it black and white. Later on, you can correct, you can read, uh, you can edit, you, you yourself, you can edit. As a creator, you can, you have the rights to edit. Yes? Yes, any questions? We'll have, so I'll reserve the last 10 minutes for questions. We can have a deliberation, discussion, anything it can be. It need not be a question, exact question. Or if you have anything to say, please say. I'll be happy to listen to you. I think, uh, Dr. Maha, I think we can yes. continue and the last uh, 10 minutes we can reserve for uh, discussions. Okay, fine, Gerard. So, actually, I am done with my PPT. I thought of uh, like listening to students now. I wanted to listen to students. Okay, dear students. Ma'am, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, uh, there is lots of there are lots of writers who pen new words and uh, invent new uh, vocabulary. But how many of these vocabulary uh, ends up in the actual use of native speakers? Many actually. The very word catamaran was not uh, in English. It is not a, actually an English word. But English is such a word. The natives of English are so so magnanimous people. They accept new words. They accept new words and they accept new culture. The, the word, it, it, it went on from, it, this word uh, was not an English dictionary. Only after the British came to India, they found this Kattumaranu. They found this here. And after that, they used, uh, they just grabbed that word and made it as Kattumaran. Because they, could not, they couldn't pronounce it Kattumaranu.
Yes? Anybody else? Even the very word over, when you write O V E R, if when you write the complete word over, you will we'll have to pronounce it over. When you combine that with the, that with another word, okay. For the next O, what we do is purposefully we make it as with an apostrophe. We, we put E R. So we have that freedom. When we write, we have that freedom. Uh, Dr. Maha. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was really a wonderful presentation. Uh, Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Actually, now I would like to ask one uh, uh, on behalf of our students. Yes, sir, please. Yeah. Uh, can you tell our students uh, to start with this, how to write a poem? You say that uh, you can take the liberty of uh, writing our own words, but then yes, sir. With, with the known words, how can yes, sir. With the known yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, with the known words, how can uh, they initiate their own writing verses? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, please. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, I wanted to say that towards the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you for uh, reminding me that, sir. To start off with, we have to start off with couplets. Just two lines. No need. Need not even be a couplet form. It need not even be in couplet pattern. You can even uh, beautifully name it as haiku. Okay, like haiku, ha haiku has doesn't have any structure. It's the shortest poem. It doesn't have any structure. It doesn't have any regular pattern. Just for the sake of writing, we write. But it will give you lot. But it haiku gives a lot of meaning. It has intense meaning in it. So you can start off with haiku. It's a freestyle actually, and don't you uh, j try to dramatize things. Make it as simple as you can. And first of all, you have to believe that you are capable of writing poems. First of all, we must believe that we are poets, and use very simple language first of all. Firstly, use very simple language. Secondly, read a lot. To write something, you have to read a lot. Third, you have to observe. observe. Keep observing. Because you have to relate uh, to the present situation. If I ask you to write a poem on COVID, will not you write? After this series of lockdowns, of, uh, definitely all of us will write. Don't think of grammar. Start writing first of all. Later on give it to your professors or your teachers and they will correct it for you. Thank you. Thank you very much yes. uh, doctor. Yes sir. Yeah. Oh, yes sir. Thank you so much sir. Ma'am, uh, I have yes. a question, ma'am. Yes, please. Uh, first, we st started with uh, simple poems. Uh, uh, while crossing, uh, while writing uh, five or six poems, we realized that we have to know more words uh, to write uh, more poems. Yes, definitely. You have so, to improve your uh, your uh, vocabulary. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, how can we know uh, those words, ma'am? Um, any suggestions, sir? Yes. So, do you have have the habit of watching uh, quick, uh, like cricket commentary, listening to cricket commentary? You, we have the habit of watching to cricket, but do we really watch and observe or listen to the commentary? 
No, we don't. Uh, Actually, we, we don't. Just watching the players. Yes, you play, you you'll be watching their play, not even the players. We'll be watching the play actually, the game actually, right? Yes, Thereafter, please listen to commentaries in English. Please listen to English interviews and keep reading lots and lots of books. Actually, I when I mean books, it's not books that are prescribed for uh, prescribed for you in the syllabus. Just read books. Like if you go to the, uh, if you are just Traveling on a uh, on a train on a train, just carry an English book. And easiest way to learn a language is to feel like you are the native. Feel that you are a native of that particular language. If you feel like you are a native, obviously you will catch up that uh, accent so well. The the moment you catch up some the that that uh, particular language accent immediately. You will be able to learn new words. And listen to lots and lots of English songs. Keep singing English songs. And apart from that, if you have the habit of reading newspaper, read newspapers and readers digest. From my childhood uh, childhood. Like I, uh, I had uh, the uh, like I was fortunate enough to read Digest, and our college library, Saint Joseph's College Library. Please make use of it. It's such a treasure. It's such a treasure. You're actually you're all fortunate enough. Visit the library like once, uh, once or twice a week. Ma'am, yes. This poetic yes, line English. license is only for the English language, or uh, it no, is no, it's, no, no, no. It's meant for any for any native. It's it's meant for everyone. That's why I even played a Tamil song for you. That is the reason why I played the, a Tamil song for you. Thank you, madam. I'm not only asking you to like coin new words. You need not even coin new words. A poet is comfortable enough. He can go. He can uh, like go on in any meter. He can write on in any pattern. Okay, and he can even coin new words. Ma'am, I and have a question. You, yes, please. Yes, please. Ma'am, uh, you said that a uh, poetic license gives the uh, writer to uh, go beyond the norms. Uh, breaking the rules and all, but do we have the freedom to actually go beyond dimensions while writing a poem, not just sticking on to what we are uh, uh, about to express, beyond, going beyond dimensions? We are not purposely going beyond dimensions. We want we want to express, and those expressions will fall into its own dimension because it is it is not a very it is not planned actually, right? It's unplanned. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So then, how will it fit into the already existing dimension? Yes, ma'am. I got it, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Actually, you, you should treat it as the freedom. It, it is the, just the freedom to write as we wish. That is actually poetic license. And it doesn't mean that we have to keep breaking all the rules. We can even stick on to rules now and then, or you can also, and few will be sticking on to the rules, and but still they will be very happy. They, they will be producing beautiful poems and beautiful, uh, like beautiful, any creation it could be. Okay, uh, Professor. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Zero. Yes, yeah, I think I would also uh, just contribute a bit. Yes, At please. Least since uh, yes. we were speaking about uh, sticking to uh, grammatical rules, yes. I think it will make uh, a poem more of a prose. It will become a prose uh, poem. Yes. We call it as a, a verse poem. Yes. Uh, it will be pseudo poetry, we call it. 
and pseudo poetry may not be uh, so appealing to the readers. Uh, poetry <laughs> is nothing but its uh, rhythmicity and the harmony of words, musicality. Yes. Okay? So to begin with, uh, I think I have put it in the chat box. Uh, or uh, shall I share only one poem, just two minutes? Please, please, sir. Yeah, because uh, people were asking as to how uh, a poem could be okay written. Uh, yes, please. Look, for instance, is the poem visible? Annabelle Lee, the screen? Yes, it was many and many years ago. Yes. Yeah, look at the way uh, the second stanza begins. I was a child and she was a child in the kingdom by the sea. But we love with a love that was more than love and I and my Annabelle Lee. Okay, if we go by grammar, what is the rule of uh, grammar? How does it go? Uh, when it comes to the pronouns, the rule is the second person first and the first person should be placed in the second place. She and I, you and, uh, it is like she and you, come and meet me. He and she, like that. Okay, but here, for the sake of rhythmicity, the author has put I in the first place. That creates an effect. I and my Annabelle e, uh, puts the agony of the writer yeah, for having missed his lady love is presented. Okay, we love with the love which is more than love. That's a, a kind of rhythm. So better when you begin writing poetry, my dear friends, as uh, Hachodi sir, I was so interested in making all of you uh, uh, as budding poets, want all of you to contribute. So start writing with a uh, rhythmic poetry. Try to look for, uh, there is a, a Hindu paper has come out with a beautiful article on rhythmic dictionaries, which can be used, okay? a dictionary of rhythmic words. It's also available in Google Play Store. You can check for, uh, what is it? Poetry supportive uh, software, which is available where you can search for, uh, what is it? Uh, rhythm dictionary. Okay, use it and uh, find rhythmic words, put it together and you will become a good poet. I think somebody is uh, sharing, we can stop it. And if there be any questions, we can go by it. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Maha for uh, yes. giving me some space. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sharal. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, dear students, are there any questions, any doubts to be um, clarified with the resource person? You may do so. Okay. I think uh, they have uh, got clear information. Okay. Now, uh, thank you, Dr. Maha, very much for your uh, wonderful presentation and for your uh, interactive session. Now it's over to the MC. Thank you, Jadon. Yes, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for enlightening us with your valuable words. It is very inspiring to listen to you. And uh, this webinar was very interactive. I hope all the participants uh, find it good as I. Now, I would like to welcome uh, Digo, my friend Digo Benwick to uh, to thank the gathering. A pleasant good evening to one and all gathered here. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. So here I am to extend our tokens of gratitude to all those who have made this day's program a fruitful and successful one. First and foremost, I thank the head of the Department of English, Dr. V. L. Jaipal, for his constant support in all our endeavors and also for felicitating the gathering with today. Thank you, sir. I extend my I extend my sincere gratitude to the resource person of the day, Dr. S. Maha, Assistant Professor at National College Trichy, for spending her valuable time with us and for her informative and enlightening talk on poetic license. It was great listening to you, ma'am, and I thank you on behalf of the Bards Club. Thank you. I also thank Dr. Gerald Sahayanathan and Dr. Beverly Maria Francis, the coordinators of the Bards Club, for organizing this wonderful talk for our students and for their continuous support in all our activities. 
finally, my gratitude goes out to all the professors and my dear fellow students for their active participation in this program, without whom this special talk wouldn't have become a great success. I thank the coordinators for giving me this opportunity to thank this wonderful gathering on behalf of the Bards Club. On behalf of everyone, I once again thank you one and all for your active participation and patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maha, and uh, thank you, dear participants, for being here. I hope you got a lot of insights from our resource person. And thank you, uh, Benwick, for the nice uh, word of thanks. And, uh, uh, I wish to thank yes, the, head of the, the head of the Department of uh, St. Joseph's College, English, St. Joseph's College, Chuchi, Dr. V. L. Jaipal, my professor. I thank you, uh, I thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm really indebted to you. And I'm very happy to meet you after long years. Thank you so much, sir. I am also grateful to Dr. Yes, Gerald, a very good friend of mine. I keep learning from uh, Gerald a lot. I thank Dr. Beverly Maria Francis for giving this opportunity. And last but not the least, I thank all my student friends for listening to me. Thank you so much for making this evening a wonderful one. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Maha. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, for your presentation and for uh, your uh, uh, words yes, of sir. thanks. It is our pleasure. Yes, uh, I think uh, Dr. Gerald and Dr. Beverly had uh, made uh, this year's Bats Club a uh, very effective one. Okay, uh, and uh, they have a very good record of uh, conducting five meetings. I really appreciate them, and I once again thank you. I could see that you are growing uh, in academics in a very great way. We will meet uh, in direct after uh, some time. Thank you, Mr. Maha. Thank you, yes, Dr. Gerald. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Thank Beverly. You, thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, it was thank great you, listening to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Beverly, ma madam. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me here. Gerald, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the great for the great gesture. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Lovely to be here. Thank you. This is offline next year. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, dear participants. Albert, please, thank you. There is an um, attendance link which is posted in the chat box. Please fill the attendance link and then feel free to move out of the room. Thank you. Thank you, Jero.